what's up everybody, Maddie Mad Dog Forberg here and thank you so much for joining us today for this YouTube video. We are at Labrada and we have a push session. So I'm a little under six weeks out from my third wellness competition. I've been powerlifting for a very long time and have recently made the transition into bodybuilding in the last year or so. I'm just coming off of a nice long off season, been in prep since about January. So I'm really excited to get to the end here. So training sessions are starting to change and evolve a little bit. Um, by that, because we're getting into lower calories, lower energy, we're not trying to build as much. Um, the response from my coach Liv this morning to my check-in was now training is going to be taken to two to three RIR. So that means reps in reserve. The way you can think of that is really how much you've got left in the tank. If you've ever picked up a weight and you're like, uh, I could probably do like five more of these. It's a good way to think of that. So right now we're not going to be insanely pushing to failure, but we're going to be keeping two to three reps in the tank and we've got a push session. So I'm excited to show you guys some of our upper body work. Let's get to it. All right, guys, first exercise on the menu is the Smith Machine Dead Stop Shoulder Press. You can definitely do this exercise just with dumbbells. However, the Smith Machine is really great for those that might struggle with that overhead stability pressing the dumbbells, or if you just have a hard time getting them up, this is a great way to kind of build your confidence in that skill level because the Smith Machine can't really move from that path the way that you can if you're dumbbell pressing. You know, you've got all this range of motion to push your elbows back and whatnot. So even if you are struggling in the short term and want to build that confidence and that stability, the Smith is a great way to start. Um, we have the dead stop here for a couple of reasons, but mainly, you know, also as a reminder to keep that tension at the bottom. When I first started doing this movement in my training sessions, I would kind of get to the bottom, drop it, then push back up. And it was just a little bit lazy. So really what we're trying to do here is when we reach that dead stop position, we're not moving any sort of way. We're staying there. We're keeping that tension and then driving hard. Um, a couple of things to think about when you're setting up on this Smith machine press, um, any dumbbell press as well. A lot of the times people can get very rounded over um, or they're trying to push against the pad behind them, we really want you to be driving against the pad. We want your feet flat on the ground to help you create that stability again. Um, and you want your sternum over your ribs. So we want to be pushing back into that chair. We're not doing this crazy arch here. Not only is that uncomfortable, but it's also changing the intended musculature that we want to work. All right, guys, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I am prepping for my third wellness bodybuilding competition. If you've never heard of the wellness division, that's totally fine. It's pretty new to the United States. It's been very big in places like Brazil, but this is probably the first year, year and a half that it's you know, gained momentum and been really popular in the big shows here in the United States. Um, so a little bit about the category. It's very unbalanced. So a lot of the time when we see bodybuilding, um, we want to balance physique. It's one of the most beautiful parts of it is that, you know, they, they look like sculptures, right? And so with wellness, we're creating more of an unbalanced physique, meaning we don't want the body, the upper body to be as big as the lower body. The lower body is really the main thing that we're really looking at, um, you know, quads, hamstrings, glutes, all of that. And so we don't want the upper body to match. Now, what this means is I can't really take my upper body training sessions to the extreme the way that I do with my quad sessions, for example, and in the off season because I'll be in such a position to grow and eat, we're gonna be cutting down on one of our upper body training sessions, which I'm not really looking forward to. I really do love these sessions, especially because I do a lot of lower body training. Um, so like I mentioned in the beginning as well, I'm doing two to three reps in reserve here. Um, and these sessions don't get that much emphasis uh, in my training schedule. I don't get to eat as much on these days because we're not trying to grow as much here, but going through the motions adequately, still getting you know, good technique is still really important.
So a couple technique things starting out on something like a barbell shoulder press movement. Um, you want to play around with your grip a little bit. So I always recommend starting about 90 degrees uh, because you know our aim is to still get really good range of motion out of the bottom here. And so if we're out too far here, we're just gonna be coming down like this, or if we're too narrow, our hands are gonna be inside of our elbows. Um, it's not gonna be very comfortable. And so what I, I usually recommend is starting with about 90 degrees here and trying to play around with what feels comfortable, um, you know, more narrow or wider from there. But I definitely don't recommend being super narrow and coming in through this position. All right guys, next we have a seated machine lateral raise. Um, if you don't have this machine at your gym, you are always able to do dumbbell lateral raise or cable lateral raise. Um, the thing with dumbbell lateral raises is that it's heaviest at the top here. However, when we have a machine like this, we can kind of manipulate uh, where it, it is the heaviest. Um, when it comes to setup, same thing when it, we want to think about when we're setting up for, say, leg extensions, we're thinking of where the cams are. So for these cams of the machine, we want them to be in line with our shoulder joint. Additionally, with this machine, it's not something where you really want to try and flare your elbows out and come all the way up here. Um, we want to keep it in that active range of motion, coming to about here, um, but we're also not negating uh, the tension at the bottom on the way down. We don't want to just get sloppy and lazy and come down here. We still want to take our time regardless of the position, so coming up to about here and really focusing on the descent as well. We don't want to just drop at the bottom and then have to reset. So we're gonna keep this positioning throughout the entire exercise. Another thing setup wise with this machine, we don't want to be so far onto the pad and we don't want to be so far back ways. We want to have a slight forward lean. The reason we don't want to be totally entirely on the pad here is because when we have this path this way and we're so far forward, it's going to make it more of a trap exercise. It's where you're going to feel it really the most. So kind of finding that middle ground of staying forward here and then when we drive through the movement stopping about parallel not letting ourselves get into this kind of shrug position um, again stopping about parallel and taking our time on the descent as well All right, what's up guys? Now we are on to cable side laterals, and I'm gonna change your life with a couple tips here. This is definitely one of the exercises that I used to absolutely butcher when I first started training, um, and I didn't know how much a few small tweaks would make a massive difference. I used to always think I could never grow my shoulders, but really I just wasn't paying attention. I wasn't training them consistently. Um, so here's a couple things. Number one, using a cuff. I have loved using a cuff for a variety of things, um, but especially side laterals. You can, these are from our good friend, Joe Bennett, the hypertrophy coach, but you can get these on Amazon, find some cheapy ones. They're great for, you know, lats, for side laterals, for kickbacks, all that kind of stuff, but I'll show you these.
I'm gonna do the other side before I talk again. Let's talk setup now for this. A lot of the times we'll start it at the bottom. We'll start going from here to here because we think of lateral raises and think we just need to be off to the side. However, if we're being completely literal with this side lateral movement, like a lot of people are, they go all the way out here. However, that's not really working our delt very much as it is working like our front delt, medial delt, as much as it is, it is working our rear delt. So we really wanna take this super lateral position and come a little bit forward, you know, uh, about 45 degrees. We wanna have a slight bend in our elbow, nothing too crazy. Um, but most importantly here, we wanna stay in our active range of motion. So instead of going from all the way up here, and then to all the way down here, losing that tension. We kind of want to start and finish the movement about here. So you're starting a couple inches out, coming all the way up to about here before you reach any kind of rotation, trying to get too far up overhead into that position. And a good way to do that is to start this machine a little bit higher than you would, you know, from off the ground. Something I like to remind my clients of um, when they feel like, oh, I just feel this exercise mainly in my traps, I tell them to shake it off. When they get into the position and set up, just kind of shake it off a little bit, get standing straight up, and then begin. Because a lot of the times we start in this shrugged position already, and we're just coming, coming up this way, and we just need to loosen the tension and remember that we're trying to feel this area. So when we start the position here, like I said, to start the movement here, we're gonna really focus on driving out that way instead of what we often see is this very disjointed movement, right? So. All right, so we've got a couple more exercises before we finish with the session, but I wanted to let you guys know that I am coming out with a DELT program. It's gonna be an add-on program. It'll be about two days a week so that you can add it to your current training or whatever you like to do. Um, and that will be coming out the first week in June. So if you enjoyed this training and wanna get a pump with us, come join us on the DELT program. All right, so now we're moving on to triceps. I'm doing a single arm tricep movement here. You can do both arms, you can do single arm. I prefer the single arm because I can feel like I can focus a little bit more and have a better contraction. Um, unfortunately, I don't get to do too much tricep work. Because of my background in powerlifting, I was a big bencher. Not that I was the strongest bencher. My best bench was 215, uh, 125 pounds as a junior. Um, but <laughs> I did do a lot of bench work. So my triceps are pretty sturdy and unfortunately I don't get to work them very much um, but I, I definitely enjoy this part of the training session.
All right, so we are pretty much done with the bulk of our work this training session. Uh, the last thing we really have left is some cable crunches. I've talked about this recently on my social media, but if you missed it, I will give you some tips here. This is also one of the exercises that I used to commonly do wrong. Um, mainly, you know, like anything, I just would copy what I would see in the gym, and I just thought that was correct until recently. Um, I've done a lot more digging as I've gotten into coaching. I, it's because I learned how much I love knowing how to actually do things, how to actually feel it. So when we come down here and we get at the bottom, we really want to make sure that our, our hips, our femurs, everything is staying in the same place. And really all we're doing is kind of bending a little bit at the hips and having this spinal flexion. So we're going to have some of that curvature. That's what we want here. Um, we don't want to be pulling with our arms. We don't want to be just yanking the weight or squatting the weight. We want to kind of sit back here and just think about curling in. All right, guys, that will conclude our push day session. Again, I know it wasn't one of my most intense, you know, go to failure training sessions for the reasons I mentioned earlier in this episode, but I hope you still enjoyed. Please let me know if you decide to do this training session with me. I'd love to see it. Once again, I am Maddie Mad Dog Forberg here at Labrata. You can use code Maddie10 for a discount. And if you ever want to see me on social media, get some more technique, tips, all that kind of stuff, or one to one coaching, check me out on Instagram at Maddie Forberg. Thank you again for coming and we'll see you next time.